All right, I'm going to call the meeting to order just so Bob can present real quick and jump off. Uh, 704. All right. And, you as far as I, and Bob's just going to present on the Doyle. I mean, if there's something else, obviously, Bob, feel free, but go ahead. Yeah, no worries. Thanks, Frank. I appreciate it. So uh, last Thursday when we met, um, we presented all the facilities capital, and there was a, a question, Phil, I think it was you who said, or Frank, one of you two suggested uh, possibly merging them together, getting real quotes and see if there's any cost savings on doing it together. Um, so I sent an email uh, to Joe. I know he sent it over Frank. Frank, I don't know if you shared it with I everybody. It. Yeah, I saw it. Okay, yeah. great. So I, I could just go over that real quick. So I got quotes from um, SNS Abatement. Uh, they're, in, they're in town. They do a lot of uh, asbestos abating. And uh, Mark Losey from FP Losey Flooring. He's done a ton of flooring around the school, smaller projects for us. Um, so the flooring price I got from Mark is pretty much set. Um, we could dice it any way we want, but to do the whole project, um, it'd be $14,270. Um, now I have that broken down by area if you guys want to see it. If not, um, there's four areas um, that, that need to be done. Um, so S and S abatement broken down. If we do the entire project together, um, which would be the boiler and the abating the four areas of the tiles, that would cost $28,000. Um, if you break that down, the boiler is $18,000 and then the tile would be 12,885 if, if you do them in two separate projects. So doing it in one project together, you're saving $2,885 right there on the abatement. So there's a little savings on the abatement, right? Not much on the floor, put them together, but the big savings that we would see would be on the hygienist. Um, so, so having a hygienist come in, um, all at once, we would be able to merge areas together. Um, so when you do a hygienist, it's it's about, and Joe, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's about doing uh, certain areas in either square footage or linear footage together. Um, so that's how you can merge some areas together in spaces. Um, so this, this if we did it at one, at one, uh, one bang, it would be three, um, three reports that they would have to do versus if we did it separated by boiler and tile. The boiler would be one. Um, and then if we did, once we did the tile, that would be three as well. So the, the cost savings there is, right? Instead of having the hygienist come back multiple times and doing one more area, um, you only have the hygienist come once. Um, and having them come once, the, the quotes are approximately around $4,500 versus if you have them come multiple times to do more areas, you're looking at like, uh, I think it was around eight grand. So, you know, broken down, um, including the hygienist to do the boiler abatement and hygienist would be about $20,000 if you did that by itself. Um, if you did the tile abatement by itself, that would be the abatement, the tile, the hygienist, which would be $33,155. Um, so that would be the difference in cost savings doing them separately versus together. Um, you would, you would save $6,385 if you did both projects together at one time. So doing that all together at one time would be 46,770, um, doing them, doing them, um, doing them separately. You're looking at like $53,000. So, I mean, there's, there's some significant savings there. Still, the number's pretty big doing them together, right? Almost 50 grand, 45 grand. Um, but again, right, if we if we wait the cost cost year over year materials, they could go up. So you you might even be looking at more than, you know, the 63, $6,400 savings right now. You might, you know, you might be paying 10 grand extra if you wait a year or two. Well, before the general questions from everybody, uh, two questions: Is the is the finished tiling to replace what we're taking out? Is that included in this cost? And and B: Is there any more abatement that's going to be needed to be done at Doyle in the future? Nope. So this would this would cover all abatement at the Doyle, except for uh, I believe one small um, special ed room that's kind of off in the corner um, that has carpet over it right now and one closet. So. I didn't add those two areas because they're not really um, would to be able to join into the into the hygienist and it would be a totally another another project. Um, but yeah, this would finish the 
the last classroom with asbestos tile, the last hallway, um, the kitchen, and the and the main office area. And yes, the, the to your question one, the tile, the cost of the tile. That's that fourteen thousand quote is all encompassing, awesome. materials and labor. Anybody have any questions for clarification on on um, these items? On on the new report, it's combined. I think Joe has the cost as forty seven thousand, as opposed to twenty five and twenty five, which obviously were estimates before. Um, so Bob had figured it and gotten the credit <coughs> post that was at fifty three, and now we're at forty seven, or well forty six, seven something. Bob, correct me if I'm wrong in what I'm saying. But. Yeah, it's all right. A few, a few dollars here and there, right? Okay. All right. Anybody? Anything? Nope. All right. Yeah, I'm good. Bob, thank you thank for you, coming. Bob. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. All right. Have care. a good night. Thank you yep. very much. Bye, Bob. All right, Todd and Todd and Jeff. I'm uh, sorry to. I want to squeeze that in real quick. We had a question from the previous meeting. No problem at all. All right. Uh, okay. I know Todd, we've talked to you before. Jeff, we welcome you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. I appreciate All it. Right. Um, then the, the floor is yours. Okay. And, go ahead. Yeah, I think, um, so I think Bob had originally presented our request for uh, projectors for the Galvin Middle School. Um, we had originally uh, sent an estimate over. Uh, and since then, Todd and I have been working together on, on getting actual counts, finding like which models were the best, uh, the best way to kind of present this. And I think uh, what we're looking at now is, um, I, well, I'll start with a little history. Uh, when I first started here at the, at the, uh, with the district, um, we, uh, I kind of moved into it. They were like 10 year old projectors at like the Woodville, some of the schools, uh, and they pretty much failed half of the, half of the school failed, you know, consistently. Uh, and so um, at that time I had come in and we kind of created a five-year replacement plan of projectors. Um, since then, we've obviously seen that those projectors last longer than five years. Uh, and so now we're kind of looking at a seven-year-ish project, uh, projector replacement um, just because the way they last, you know, they last a lot longer, they're better than they used to be. Uh, and now we're looking at, uh, you know, by the time that the Galvin Middle School's fall, uh, fall next fall would start, uh, it'd be seven years that the projectors have been there, crazy enough. Uh, and so we're looking at, uh, at replacing, uh, there's uh, the actual number is 88 projectors uh, in the school plus the auditorium projector is what we're kind of looking for. And the cost of that, um, based on an estimate we have from one of our AV vendors is, uh, is 153,834. And I know that this group had some questions uh, on that and uh, happy to clarify, answer any questions you have. For sorry, one hundred fifty-three thousand eight hundred thirty-two. Yeah, one hundred fifty-three thousand eight hundred thirty-two. Not get you ninety-six projectors. Eighty-eight projectors. Plus yeah, the, uh, plus and, the auditorium. Plus the and auditorium. those and those are just being identified as the ones needed to replace broken ones. Uh, so right now, um, instead of just replacing broken ones because you don't know what's going to break during the year, what happens is we you know, a number of projectors fail during the year. So, you know, we don't know if it's going to be six projectors, if it's going to be 20 projectors. Right now, this year so far, we've replaced, you know, pro, uh, 12 projectors in the district this school year. So um, the more, the, the longer they sit there, the more that more break more often. And so uh, these, if you wait until more and more and more break, then you can't properly budget uh, for the large number of replacements. So the way we've always done it is you replace a number of devices, a number of of projectors per year. And then when you take them out, you don't just get rid of the ones that work, you keep them in the schools. We keep them stored in the school in case one of a different school breaks. And then you take that over there and you can replace that while you wait for the replacement cycle of that. So we're not taking them down, getting rid of them. We're taking them down, storing them, using them in schools until their replacement uh, cycles are up uh, if we need to replace one. Um, and, and that's kind of how we recycle our own equipment instead of sending it out to be recycled. What's the total number of projectors in the school system? Like what, what denominator, like, so 12 projectors, 88 out of how many, like, or what, what are you, and what's your, what's your plan, you know, expecting a certain percentage every year, what can we expect in the next like three years, let's say that you're planning uh, in terms of, let's say everything works fine for three years, but you're still, you sounds like you want to refresh 
a little bit like what's the plan there so how many do you have total and like what's your plan for for the next few years so there's probably i, I don't have the exact number in front of me but there's about any uh, almost an equal number at the high school probably a little bit more um the elementary schools probably total have 110 maybe there's like 300 320 total 330 total i think uh, was our was when i looked at the spreadsheet um, I don't have it in front of me right now. I can get that actual number if you need it. Um, and what do we do is we're trying to replace groups at a time instead of saying five at the Woodville, six at the Galvin, you know, two at the high school. Uh, it's we replace this school this year. We're next, you know, next year we're not going to do anything. Todd and I have already talked this through. Uh, maybe the year after we need to replace, you know, a big elementary school and a small elementary school. So we're not we're trying to spread it out so it doesn't end up piling up and you end up with you know 200 projectors in one year. So um, but then with these newer projectors, these are, um, so the reason most of the projectors we have fail is they have um, a, a lamp in them that heats up the LCD panel in the projector. And that's the part of the unit that usually fails. Um, and these projectors that we're looking at for this year for the new ones have lasers in them, which don't require a lamp, don't get as hot. Uh, and we're hoping that they're going to last longer. I mean, you don't know because we don't have history with them right now. But uh, our hope is that they last longer than the projectors we have now that have lamps in them. And the lamp replacements are all done with the local budget, the local school budget. Um, but the projectors themselves, we're, you know, we're hoping, you know, again, that capital funds those as they have in the past. Okay, so, so, 88, so 88 projectors is about 27% of the total <clears throat> number of projectors. So it, it, it's, it's a lot for one year. Um, and is that, but that's, you, you're saying, I, I guess I'm just trying you know what we try to ask our departments is if we can't give you everything you're asking for like what's the minimum i guess that you need to at least keep things working and the understanding that well there these things are probably getting a lot more use than they were two years ago because of the world we live in but like you know what what's the what do you need and like what do you want i guess i mean the problem is if we don't replace the whole thing right if we did say half of it um then we're gonna have to come back either next year where we weren't planning to ask for anything uh, and Todd and I have been work, trying to work through where, where we don't both ask for things at the same time, the same year. Um, or it starts to pile up with the other schools and, and we have more failures. And so then we'd be saying, well, I need half the Galvin and then uh, an elementary school and another elementary school. And I, I, I'm trying to get to a point where we're not asking for more than 20%. You know, it's, it's the older they get, uh, the, the, the more that need replacement that year, I guess, is, is what concerns me about it. I mean, Yes, we can always put in less. Absolutely. Um, I just don't want that pile up to happen. And that's kind of that's where I that's why I tried to create the plan. And again, initially, it was a five year plan. And we pushed it out to seven now because we know the projectors last and we don't have to ask for as much money at once. And what's that plan say? So you're saying but you're saying you're asking for none. You would if you got 88 this year, you would ask for none next year. Correct. But wouldn't that be piling up? Wouldn't you rather get some every year rather than skipping and then how and then what what about for the next year after zero would it be another 88 well for your first question let me let me answer that i would rather have all the same projectors in the same school if i can yeah. get that because it's easier to maintain that way it's easier to yeah. kind of share parts back and forth uh after that let me grab uh hold on i do have a spreadsheet of projectors just have to find it so i believe and and i know you're new but so I'll, maybe this goes to jefferson i i thought we've been buying getting projectors the last few years and maybe my other capital planning members have a I can go grab my binder but I, I thought we've been basically getting projectors every year so I'm just yeah I did too I thought them. that there was a need to replace projectors on this I thought there was a schedule for them some some yeah, years we've why, got some yeah. years we've purchased spares and not full school replacements uh and those were used when projectors broke in schools and we were just replaced the broken ones as you when you yeah. like asked before um, and then we, you know, we end up buying some out of the local budget because it, it over it kind of grows over that number of, of projectors we purchased already. Um, trying to find that. Like I remember the Walt when the Walton project, we approved projectors in the uh, permanent building committee. That those projectors were moved out of capital planning and moved over to the project. So there's a number that project now has to be two two years old. So I don't know. It's a small school, so. And, and those were the no high school or Galvin, but yeah. right. And those were the new ones uh, for the school. We kept the old ones where they were. So those were only the ones we purchased with the school building pro project were just the new ones for the new classrooms. Yeah. And I wasn't and around for later. Galvin. So I don't know what was included, but the Galvin is what, how many years old now? Is it nine, 10? It'll be, it'll yeah. be that seven years seven. old. Seven. Seven. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. yeah. 
So, so Todd and Joe, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just going to say a couple of years ago, we did buy a bunch in a bunch of spares and then they went unused at that year. We didn't. And at that time, we were buying them to replace broken ones. But it turned out that there weren't that many broken ones, which is fine. That, that's not the issue. And, um, and Jeff, we, we like to, as a committee, not overspend to give you 50 sitting in a closet. Uh, we, don't, we don't have a problem. We don't, the last thing we want is to have a classroom, not have a projector. Right. No, I get that. And that's, that's and you, you, if we all try to predict, all right, you know, in, in uh, December, the second grade classroom at Woodville is going to lose their projector. We need to replace it. That's difficult. That, that's different than saying, all right, you know, give me a, a closet full of projectors. So right. I have them. That's a little bit different. Um, right. I, I, I compare it to uh, when we first did Chromebooks. We actually, this committee bought uh, a couple sets of grades Chromebooks. And then it was incorporated by the superintendent at the time to put it into your budget. So I guess the long-term question isn't, you know, are we going to give you, uh, is this committee going to give you money for projectors? That's, we, we can do that. Yeah. Is the long-term question is, are you going to be able to put in your budget to project this out so you don't have to come to the capital budget every year to replace those? As you, as the same with the, the Chromebooks. Uh, obviously, you know how the Chromebooks are being paid for now. That's not been capital. Yeah. Is that do you right? See and we, and we both it's not. I mean, it's a little bit different um, in that devices. I mean, we did take on the the uh, responsibility for all devices yeah. um, starting. I think I think it was a year after I got here. We started to move those into the to the local budget yeah. uh, with the agreement that we would always take on devices ourselves instead of asking capital for any devices ever. I look at this more, and I know that's a it's more than one year. You know, it's it's a more frequent request. But I always look at this as, you know, it's like Wi-Fi. We got Wi-Fi last year. I know that. Um, and then, you know, two years, I think a year before that, we might have got projectors. And I, so I think we've been trying to spread it out. So I don't know. <clears throat> I know that right now there's not a plan to do that. I was, you know, I think we were, you know, we've been asking for them uh, through capital when we need them. Um, so I, I don't think there's, the, I mean, I don't have a plan for that, for putting them in our local budget. I don't think the local budget covers that. Well, last year's request says here, I have it in front of me, that tier two spare projectors right. needed to replace projectors on the schedule as needed, as opposed to right. replacing all the projectors at once. That was trying so, to push it off another, right. And I was trying to push it off another year. Another because, year, okay. Yeah, because we had initially said we were gonna do a five-year plan and because we didn't have as many fail, tried to push it off another year. And I keep trying to do that as much as possible, uh, even with these, like if these didn't, if these were perfectly fine over seven years, I'm going to push it to an eighth year because I don't want to, just like you guys, I'm trying not to spend any more money than I have to, uh, whether it's my money in the local budget or capital money. I obviously want to spend as little as possible. And that's why Todd and I usually try to talk these things through as well to try to make sure, you know, and, and kind of go back and forth and, you know, can we go another year? Do we, does, does Todd have a project that he needs to do on capital requests that we don't want to, we don't want to double up that request. So, um, so things shift, do, do shift both ways. Uh, usually further out if possible, because that's obviously we, we want to push it as keep the what we have as much as possible. Uh, we do the same thing with devices too, like if uh, Chromebook replacements, uh, we've got, we started off with a three-year replacement plan for Chromebooks in our local budget. And we did the same thing. We're like, well, they lasted four, they last five, you know, sometimes if you're lucky. Uh, and then we replace smaller numbers. And that's what we're trying to do with this too. If we get these new projectors, they're a newer model, they're a newer kind of projector. If they last, you know, 10 years, great. I don't want to promise everyone here today that I won't ask for 10 years for this group of projectors again, because I don't have history with this laser projector. But if it lasted 10 years, I'm not going to come back to this group and say, hey, it's seven years. I said seven years. You got to give me the money now. I'm going to wait that 10 years and say, okay, it lasted. Great. Um, and so I'm hoping, you know, as the, as the technology gets better, uh, I hope the quality of it gets better. You know, I don't know that. I'm not building it. So uh, I would hope to be able to come back and say, okay, well, I don't need a seven-year plan anymore. I need a 10-year plan. Um, and that just pushes everything out. And so in less, you know, or we spread it out and it's less money every year. So, and it, you know, it's, I, I like to work that way. I don't like to say to you, you know, I have a seven-year plan and in seven years, I'm going to come back to you and ask again. I don't want to say that because it could be a 10-year plan, you know, I, but I do have a, in my head, it's a seven-year plan, I guess. Um, I don't know if that makes sense if, you know, 
Uh, Jeff, you, um, I think you reached the number of uh, 310 or 320 uh, projectors. Is there any, if you look into uh, the near future, is there a likelihood that that number is going to grow? Or is it also possible that the number might get smaller? I don't see the number getting smaller because that's all the classrooms in each building right now. Uh, it, in, in, for, as far as growth goes, I think we've covered all the spaces that need projectors. We usually, if we add one or two, we just buy that out of our local maintenance budget. Um, but if, um, you know, I don't know, I can't predict how many rooms the new high school would have if there is one. So uh, I don't wanna speak to that number. So it's, it's really determined by um, rooms, classrooms than it is by student population. Yeah, mostly by classrooms. And, and if obviously if there's conference rooms or meeting rooms, they would get one too. So yeah, it's not driven by the number of students. It's driven by the number of rooms. Okay. Yep. Um, let me throw this out there. Jeff, with the, um, with the, let's say the police cruises, you know, he has a certain number and then every year we replace a certain number. Some years he doesn't need all of them that we give him, but we give him anyway. Some years he, years he needs more because of accidents. It can, if this is going to be a capital item every year, can we get to the point maybe where you ask for 50 a year? So then we can incorporate into our budget and know where it's coming, like almost like a lease item, but we'll buy them out. I mean, again, I, I understand. You don't know if it's going to last seven years, five years, 10 years, but the same as a, as a police course. Right. You don't know how long they're going to last, but we're still going to give them the three every year because yeah. we don't want them to be without a cruiser. Right. Yeah. And then yeah. one year, if you know, we give you so many, and then the next year you come here, look, we have we have a hundred in the closet we haven't used. We just don't want them. Someone, David, you might be able to speak. We don't want a hundred sitting in the closet, and then they, a year later they're going to be um, the software is not going to be compatible because it's a. And that's what I'm looking at. You, but the right. other part of it is that is it is it compatible via each school? So you want them all to be compatible within each elementary and or and or the Galvin in the high school, right? I mean, right. right. And so the models yeah. we buy, yep, yeah, uh, the models we buy now um, all are compatible with the same software, the same they're the same model, uh, same manufacturer, not the same model, uh, same manufacturer device. So a teacher at the high school can go to the Galvin and project as easily with the same software, they're familiar with it. Um, yeah, I, yes. Uh, is that the, is that the, what you're asking? Well, I was going to say, is it, so for instance, if you have um, 10 classrooms at the Galvin that are not operating, but, uh, but um, you could take all those units out of the Woodville and redo the whole Woodville and do like we do for uh playgrounds and do one school a year versus you know what i'm saying yeah uh i think so so you're if we have 10 so you said if we have 10 that it, aren't can working you, can like, you go can you take the the can you take the if, if the woodville's doing if the woodville is the one who needs them the most because there's so many broken down can right. you take those uh the ones that they do have working give those to the galvin and reset everything at the woodville and then next yeah. year reset maybe the Galvin and or the Galvin or you know what I mean and do a school one school every year. I mean generally, yeah, you could do that. I mean that's what we're we're planning to do in the reverse direction. I think is we would take like these aren't going to sit in the closet. Uh, if we buy these eighty eight, they're going to get installed. All eighty eight are going to get installed. The only thing that's going to sit in the closet is the seven year old projector that um, is still not broken. Uh, and so I, I was thinking the opposite way. If something breaks at the Woodville. We take one of those old projectors, we put it in the Woodville until it's time to replace those, which could be a year, could be two years, depending on where it sits on that cycle. So uh, we are reusing projectors that work um, at other schools after we replace these. So nothing sits in the closet that's new. Everything is the same and working at the school. And then we know that we never have to worry about, well, I, obviously a new projector can break too, but uh, there's less likely that we're going to have a projector shut down in the middle of a, a lesson or in the middle of a school day. Well, what's the warranty period on them? I mean, the warranty um, is a three-year warranty. Uh, and so the, um, the vendor I'm talking to, which I obviously have to go out to bid with this, but the vendor we've been talking to, you know, they're going to support it for three years with a next day swap, you know, kind of thing. So, um, but we also will have some in-house that we could use in the building 
immediately. If somebody's in the middle of teaching that day, we could go over there and give them a spare projector temporarily until they get theirs back. So, you know, we the goal is to never have a projector down, you know, more than a couple few hours. Sure. That makes so sense. You, you must have you must have a surplus right now, right? Because you, um, you have no, we just ran out. So we had some, we had spare projectors. Okay. Uh, and right now we just used the last one probably a week ago or even this week, I think today, maybe even at the Galvin, okay. at the so Galvin we had one blow out. So yeah. If you have, but if, if we go the route of, if we go the route of a, a set number kind of cycling in per year, mm -hmm. that number, a, a subset of that number will be your your spares you have in a closet it would be correct yeah so if if we're able to to get you you know 50 or something then you have maybe you have 40 somewhere around 40 spares for to 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 go through the year and then ideally you won't use all of those then the next year if we get you another 50 then you have a growing surplus and you can feel comfortable with that. Yeah, I mean, it's possible to do that. Yeah, sure. We could definitely, um, we could definitely work with that if we have to. Is, is there a reason why, I mean, you'd come up with, um, so that's roughly one third of your projector fleet, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the only thing that concerns me about doing, doing 50 and leaving say 30 in the building is then those 30, you know, at some point those 30 are now, you know, eight years old and nine years old. And then you get back to what we had at the Woodville when I first started and things are breaking. If, if they don't happen to break, you know, in those two years, great, we got an extra two years out of them. Uh, and I see where that's a benefit to, you know, cost savings as well. Um, I just, you know, in the middle of the school day, again, I don't want projectors down as, any longer than, than I have to have them, you know. It's, so you've identified 92 projectors that are, that are a risk because of what? just age at this point and the, and the way we see them fail. So, you know, we see that that LCD panel again is the biggest failure point. Um, and so those in, in the district, we've replaced 12 of them already. Um, and so, and that's just in, you know, not even a full school year. So and and none of them have been under warranty. Not the ones that fail. No, they're six, seven years old at that point. Oh, they are. Okay. So yeah. you have 92 projectors that are seven years old. We have, uh, we actually have more than that, but uh, you know, I didn't want to ask for more than one school. Uh, cause we've already pushed some. So we have the 88 at the Galvin are, are seven, will be seven years old by the fall. Yes. <laughs> so is it eight? Cause the, the initial request I think said 92 projection, mm -hmm. uh, auditorium and HDMI wiring, and we'll get to those other two, but is, yeah. you mentioned 88 at the start. So you, are we thinking, are you thinking 88 is the number for this request now? Eight. 88 is the number plus the projector in the auditorium. So 88 um, was the count. Um, we had originally had uh, requests to add projectors to some rooms uh, and we had, uh, during the year, uh, the school had paid for those. So we were able to subtract those. And then um, the auditorium is a separate cost, uh, but that's included in the total that I gave you. Um, now, so it's 88, there... 88, 88 classroom projectors in the auditorium one. Yeah, Glass. but in the wiring, so uh, the wiring, Todd and I have been talking about this, the wiring, I think we, we can pass on the, on the replacement wiring. What's been happening when they built the building, they, um, at the connection plate, there's a 90 degree angle where the cable connects to the wall plate. Uh, and those have failed in, in some rooms. Uh, and our town electrician has been able to replace them uh, as, they, as they fail. And so we're, we're hopeful that we get the new projectors put in, that none of those cables fail. But if they did, we would, couldn't put a request with the, town, like, with the town for replacing those cables if we have to. So that'll save us a big chunk of money too. So how much is your ask, I guess, is my, how much is your ask? It's 153,834 is the total we figured we came up with, yeah. And, and that's just to replace the projectors at the Galvin? Correct. That yep. total number? Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Classrooms and conference rooms at the Galvin and the auditorium. Yeah. Okay. And then and that'll give you a, a number of projectors that are still working at the Galvin to replace other schools when they correct. Play. Yes. And, and the Galvin is your biggest ask. Is the biggest what's the word quantity of projectors or is the high school? I think the high school is, but we're not going to replace those. Uh, no, no. I, that's um, so. Yeah. Uh, next year, I'm wondering if you're going to come for the high school, which is fine. No, no. Actually, 
the high school is is last on the list in case it doesn't get rebuilt yeah. but, or whatever renovated yeah. or whatever um no i push that to last because we can because they're probably a newer projector than some of the other schools uh but no my goal is to not ask for that as part of any replacement cycle hoping that the school will be redone at some point <laughs> so so if i can make an assumption if we replace all the projectors at the galvin next year there might not be any request for projectors because there might be enough from Correct. the Galvin to replace all the other schools if they break. There will not be a request for next year. Right. Well, don't say that, but for for projectors. Yeah. Sorry. There should for projectors. Not be. For projectors. <laughs> yeah. These uh these meetings are recorded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have no okay, let me rephrase it then. I have no plan to request anything next year for projectors at any school. <laughs> okay. How's that? Is that better? <laughs> I feel better with that actually. Todd is that I mean that's what we Todd and I have been talking about. We so I don't know if you want to say anything about this. Are you good? No, that's good. Yeah, we planned on um, no school ask for next year. In next year, the town is going to have a project for some infrastructure upgrades. And is there anything that can be done so you can ask for something next year to try to spread the, 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 the bigger ask two years from now? So, you know, to the point that, you know, at giving a little over time to add up to the lot is a lot easier. You know, you guys uh, you may understand, you know, we have, you know, $8 million or $7 million worth of ass come in and we have $2 million to approve, you, right? So it's like, it's trying to, you know, any way you can split up is better, I would say for, for requests rather than coming in with the 200 or $300,000 request, you know, that's a huge chunk of our, our jet, what's been 2 million, you know, maybe we'll get, so that, that's why I ask, you know, I know you have something in the works. Is there anything that could be, you know, you know, just in forward thinking, that's that's sort of my thinking. I, I'd rather give a little in knowing that we're not going to get hit with this huge six figure request two years from now and then just not know how we're going to fund it, you know, so. Right. And I think we, and Todd, again, correct me if I'm wrong. I think we, Todd and I together, try to not make multiple requests between us. Like, so I'm making one and he's making one. And I feel like we're spreading it out by doing that. Yeah. Um, by saying like, you know, cause that's, and, and we've been doing that, I think for the last couple, three years, four years, even more. Yeah. Um, and we try not to make requests together at the same time, but I'm sorry, we try not to make them at the same time. We try to make them together. So they're not piled up like that. Got it. And so does <clears throat> Todd, Todd, do you have no requests this year per that statement? Are you correct? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We can get by with none this year. Okay. And so, Okay, so that, that's a different number to the capital planning committee. You know, that's a different number than what we're showing on our worksheet right now, right? This one three eight is a different number than what's uh, shown on our spreadsheet. So, it's one five three eight, but one five three eight three four, right? So, yeah. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, wow. my that, last that thing. includes. I, sorry, that number includes the HDMI wiring. No, we took that out. Okay. We took it out. That's, yeah. Sorry about that. Okay. Sorry. Nope, okay. Sorry, Philip. There's no, it's okay, David. Sorry. I, I, my last was these, uh, obviously these laser projectors don't need any special sort of uh, outlets, do they? No, no, no. no, they connect the same way as the other ones. Yeah. Okay. I'm just thinking when you get to the Greenwood, you know, older, the older stock, you know, so. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right, anyone else have any specific questions on the projectors? Nope. All right. Jeff, Todd, thank you very much for presenting tonight. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, guys. Nice. Yeah. You know, Joe, Joe knows a lot. Joe Conway knows a lot, but we like to hear it right from the source sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. Anytime, if you guys have other questions you think of after this, like feel free to email or whatever, call it. Thank, thank you very much. Okay. All right, we got uh, Joe Bertrand, we got you and just and Dave from uh, the FinCon, that's all we have. Yeah, how you doing guys? That's fine, good, how you doing? Good, good Joe. Hi. Um, Joe Conway, you wanna just, uh, you sent us the updated file uh, from today. Do you wanna run through that? Um, I'll, I'll just say when I when I add the, if I, if I up the projectors to 150,000 on your current sheet, that gets us to 
200, uh, 2,043,000, right around there. Is that what I'll, you get? Uh, I'll, I'll, my, I'll so share it. I updated it as we're talking. Okay. Uh, 2.047, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, if yeah. you do the exact, I, I rounded it to 150. Yeah. Um, so uh, I guess I have a, a question here. Um, well, what happened to you guys? Oh, sorry, I'm sharing the screen. <laughs> we're, still, oh, okay. we're still here. <laughs> That's back. okay, Joe. You look good. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, Joe, how did we get to the recommended amount for that category of 70,000? What? Uh, because it sounds like a good number to me. That was something uh, after, I apologize, in the last meeting, uh, I totally spaced. I had to be at the council on Monday night. To, uh, Where were you? But um, that was something uh, after the meeting, I had talked to Mr. Mayo about it. And he asked if there was a possible way, just like Frank had asked, um, you know, is there any way we could phase the project and maybe do it in three parts? Um, so he asked me to include it in that to kind of trigger the conversation to see if that was something that, you know, was a potential for that. Yeah. It was noted in that more of a placeholder to, uh, you know, give myself. Uh, who unfortunately wasn't there when we talked about it last time, but to give myself kind of the, you know, the the red flag to say, oh, you know, I, I have a comment about this. You know, this is what Steve's thoughts were at the time. Um, yeah. That's really, that's really all that, that that had served. And it was just to show too, uh, for him, when he was looking at, you know, some of the things we talked about last time, he wanted to see, you know, what that, what that might look like for the total aggregate uh, of everything. Uh, in the plan, if that was the course of action uh, that the committee took. So. Okay. If 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 you don't mind, just talking about this for one more minute, everybody. Um, if we went for the seventy thousand, which has some appeal because of it fits with the it fits with the other uh, numbers that we're looking at. Um, it looks as though that would afford them forty projectors. Okay. The way I did that was I just said, well. Uh, at their pricing, it's about seventeen, seventeen hundred and fifty dollars a machine. Mm -hmm. um, if we use that seventeen hundred and fifty, and we want to hit seventy, um, maybe we should get them used to the idea that they're going to get forty projectors. What's that sound like to you guys, you people? It sounds like he's saying that's not enough. Yeah, he's saying that they have but, a lot more broken or ready to be broken or ready to break is what I heard. And right, that they have to be purchased for the whole school at the same time, and that's just for the Galvin, right? That's this is just Galvin right now. Yeah, right. But he also said that that uh, the expected life of these things can be out to, I think, out to seven or eight years, which well, would give said, us. Well, yep, for the ahead. current ones, Dan, he said he didn't know about these new ones because he doesn't have experience with them. Uh -huh. The Galvin's at seven years, Dan. Just the Galvin's seven years old this year. Yeah. So that's where he gets his seven years, and they're all failing. Oh, okay. well, not all of them, but, yeah. right. but he opened the new ones being um, that what LCD screens fill by saying it right. Mm -hmm. The LCD Le lights or the LED lights Laser. are going to last longer than the current phones that lasted seven years laser beams i think he said laser. <laughs> <laughs> he said they could even last up to 10 years he's not sure he's not sure so uh, i think the number i think what we should think about is a number between uh the 153 eight that he's asking for and the 70 that i know this is just the 70 as joe explained you know is a kind of an agreed upon um negotiated number but I think something between those may be more more uh, reasonable than what he's he's looking for the 88 ultimate projectors. Yeah, I, I just I, I'm just like, you know, looking out for the teachers like you don't have, you know, you, you don't have the equipment working in front of your classroom. It's just, you know, if these projectors are breaking and like I, I just yeah. fear that by doing that, Dan, we're not providing our teachers with equipment that that's working, I, I guess, or, or if it breaks that we don't have something good to replace it. But uh, that, that's my only worry or, or we're only, you know, we're only giving half the half the classrooms working stuff and the other half of it is just kind of going by on a hope and a prayer. So, yeah. okay. I don't know. Well, but, that, yeah. But, yeah. 
it's a fair concern. I'm just, uh, I just looking behind his arguments. I'm wondering whether there's some planning that's not going on here, but okay. Yeah. yeah I, like I would love to see to Frank's point, like a, just a more, but I know you can't predict these things, but just a more general every year. Yeah. And maybe they'll get to that. Maybe there's been so much, maybe, maybe, you know, it's uh, he's new, you know, he said, I'm kind of going getting into this, that, Maybe there's just so much deferred broken equipment. I mean, there has to be a big ask. And then, you know, the problem is next year he's back with 88 projectors out of nowhere because so many more are broken. Then, you know, yeah. start looking into, you know, why not just replace all 300 at the same time with the town warrant? Yeah. <laughs> you right. know, like. Um, all right. I don't want to. I don't want to belabor this anymore. But I just one point uh, that I, I didn't raise with him, and and that is, shouldn't he go for? A consistent technology, yeah, it gets outmoded over time, but it gets outmoded. Uh, you know, half your half your fleet is um, is outmoded already. So, if they had the same technology in every school with every machine, it would be a lot less of a problem of uh, the 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 chinkiness of this replacement problem. Okay. Well, then that's we all, have to replace I, 300 as opposed to 90. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, all at once. Yeah, for, for me, the, the piece was, I mean, it, he, he said that they had they had no surplus, right? So that's a that's a serious place to be. Uh, there is a there's an appeal to doing like an entire school all at once. And then that then gives them the surplus to get through the next year, that year and possibly some of the next and we would be looking to them to come back next year with like a rotational plan, right? Okay, you know, we did we did your big ask, we got, we kind of um, pulled you out of the fire. What are you doing to make sure you stay ahead of the game? Because ad moves and changes are just, you know, it, it happens, you know, absolutely. If he has a three-year warranty on, on those machines, that's actually pretty good. You know, if they're going to overheat and break out of the box or something like that, that's a that's a great deal. So they 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 should they should be able to figure out what they need for a regular cadence from us. And I think asking for like thirty or forty over the course of seven years, that's you know that's I think that's appropriate. Um, we can give them an influx to to get them started and then um, and then move. Yeah. The move, they can move forward with appropriate planning in, in subsequent mm -hmm. years, which we I, haven't seen. I, I liked his answer when obviously we filled the biggest school because they're not going to do the high school because they yeah. don't want to, you know, hopefully we're going to get that new school. But this answer of next year, we're not going to need any because they're going to have so many surplus from the Galvin to replace the elementary schools, even though that was him saying we don't need, we're not going to need any next year is premature i thought that's he's being being realistic that's probably how it's going to be um even though we're, we're probably going to end up giving them a small amount just because they're different like i said they're, they're not bulbs anymore they're they're a different model they're an upgraded model from seven years ago um and it's up to us to remember next year and in, in three years from now all right hey three years ago you told us that you were going to be all set now you're asking, this is, you're asking for it again. And, you know, don't, you, you fool us once, you can't fool us twice, you know, shame on us. Um, so that's why I, I agree with given, given the, let, let's replenish the Galvin, the Galvin's seven years old, assuming most of those machines are seven years old um, and any ones that have been replaced within that seven year period will be used as backups at other schools. So we don't, this committee doesn't have to replace it. So. I, I think I, I think I support the the full amount for for that. We're going to be we're, we're we're going to be talking about the high school. It, it's that a new high school is not like going to happen in the next couple of years. Like you know we're we're in the MSBA process, which is a a handful of years probably before they're opening doors to students. You know, like so. I just don't want them to not, you know, because again, there's still students learning in that school right now that have to have projectors working. So I just hope the IT, 
here's our message. And, and, and I agree with everything just said about some sort of concerted plan moving forward for all schools. I think it would be help, help us greatly. Just on that note, uh, Phil made, uh, we're talking at a high school, we're talking five years from now, before you're even, at, 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 that's at the best to be open for students. Joe will be uh, doing the sloppy Joes in the cap by then. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> you and me, Phil. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll be right next to you. Yeah, I'll, you I'll have a beard net on. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, uh, Joe Conway, you want to stop? Obviously, we have we've got new. You want to stop from the top and just go down? Sure. You want to do a quick run through? Yeah. I mean, so as we stand, I'm sorry, with the hundred, we're standing at two two zero four seven. If yes. we give if we give the projectors the full amount, is that where you're at the bottom line? Yes, on the tax levy side, I'm right there. Two so, million forty-seven thousand. All right. So we, everybody, we en we enter with this review. Hope you know we not not really having to knock anything out. I, I think we could ask. I, I would think we could ask for this amount from Steve and the FinCom and and be okay. So let's. I mean, let's look at that. If there's something in there that looks strange, we can certainly uh, we can certainly talk about it. Um, go ahead, Joe. Thank you. So um, I'll just start running through. Uh, I'll be brief because we've been through most of this a couple of times. If we want to stop, uh, feel free, just interrupt. Um, I won't think anything of it. Um, so up at the top of the page, uh, we have our prior year leases. Those are some of the old leases um, from my group's vehicle acquisitions over the last couple of years. In the fleet section, uh, just about everything has stayed the same, although since the last time I was at the meeting, uh, I did get the final numbers for the lease purchase uh, interest rates and the prices on the vehicle dropped. Uh, the interest rates were actually uh, a point and a half better than where I thought they were gonna land. Uh, so we saw a little bit of a significant, a little bit of a savings recognized there. Um, everything else uh, inside of this is essentially stayed the same. Uh, moving down into the building section, um, we have the windows of five common that my group talked about. Um, we also have uh, the ability to put in uh, some water bubbler for the staff down at the cemetery. Um, I've included Bob's updated price of the 46,770. Um, I'll clean that line up. I, I show it in one line as a total, but that's for Bob's obviously um, total package. And we still have in the plan right now the two heat pumps at the Doyle School for $60,000. As I mentioned uh, before, the split system, my group is just, is just going to do. Uh, the garage door, my group is going to do. Um, I pulled out the fire escape stairs. Uh, honestly, for the $10,000 it was, and then having the conversation about uh, the committee thinking that was more operating than it was a capital expense. Um, Chris had said, um, based on everything else uh, on the priority list, uh, he'll make arrangements to get that done out of his operating budget you know, so we can get some of these other projects funded through here. Um, the Greenwood School, uh, the replacement of the girls' toilets. Uh, it's important to note that my staff will be doing the labor on that. So that's for the fixtures themselves and some of the, some of the traps underneath them. Uh, we also have our last oil tank in town at the Greenwood School that we're hoping to remove over the summer. At the Greenwood Fire Station, we still have in the plan a complete replacement of all the windows in the building and the replacement of the emergency generator. If you remember, that was the one in the nice plywood box that was outside in the pictures that we looked at. Joe, 8,500s for every single window at the fire station? Yes, that's a price uh, we got from Shelmar, believe it or not. It's every one but the garage doors. Are they, you know, are they decent windows? <laughs> like, <Yeah. I> just, <laughs> like, like, it's not like uh, oh, glass? Of, uh, Luan, right? Like, <laughs> no, we, we asked them, uh, when they asked for the spec, we said, you know, Harvey or similar. Yeah, because I just shopped out Harvey for my house and I, I'm, I, I want to go, I'm going to go to Shelmer. Yeah, right. I'm not, not that I'm not giving them business. This is a public meeting. I'm just, I'm just making a comment. I think the per unit price looks really low. So it's a great price if that's, if that's the deal. And of course, yeah, you should do it. I get a feeling they're getting, they must be getting some volumetric discounts <sighs> on windows that they're buying, but uh, I really couldn't, couldn't argue with that one. Thank you. Um, one of the changes 
uh, in my conversation with Mr. Mayo was the carpeting for the library. Uh, he had asked to not show that in this. Um, he had made myself aware that um, he seemed to believe that the library had some alternative funding that they could tap into uh, to accomplish this uh, via some grants and, and different gift accounts that they have. Um, they have been sitting on it for quite a while, he said, and he thinks that the carpet project uh, was going to be the perfect use for those funds, so using it for an operating expense. Um, so that has been removed for the time being. Uh, as we move down, we still have included the fencing uh, at the nursery. Uh, uh, Joe. Joe, yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead. The stairs. Oh, go ahead, Phil. You know I, what I'm going to say. I think we need to keep the 10,000 in there. I, I don't see yeah. we can keep on punting this one down the field. Like That's what I was going to say. So I I pulled that one because it's a, it's more or less a test fit, right? We have to take the treads out. We have to dig right. some to see what's going on. Um, we could certainly, I could certainly put it back in. I mean, I don't think it's, it's make or break. Um, it, it's oh, got so down. We, we've been talking, we've been, you know, we've, the issue is we've been talking about it. So I think the committee's hope is that if we put if we tag some money to it, it'll get done this year. Absolutely. I look at it this way. So I I would like to be inside and investigate what's going on before we are ready to do any projects uh, out in the street as far as the main street redevelopment is concerned. I'd like to put that past us uh, so we don't have to worry about it. Because there'll be a significant amount of roadway disruption and rumbling that's going to be happening. I'd, I'd hate to see yeah. it get worse. So, if if they can end up with a grant to do this, great. But uh, you know that's speculation at this point. I think it's best to put it in as a hard number. You're 100 right, Dan. So I would say uh, if we can pursue a grant for this, we would just make the recommendation to return the money uh, to the general fund. Yeah. We would so just moving on, um, still in the plan is the, the fencing at the nursery that we talked about um, and the money that we requested to overhaul the garage there. Um, the senior center pricing is still in. That's a final hard number update. That's to replace the four boilers with two. And we also have phase one of the window replacement at town hall. Um, another piece that uh, my group's doing out of our operating budget right now is we need to put a third electrical panel in a town hall because we're maxed out. Mm -hmm. um, so that's removed because we're doing that now. Um, the Hart Schoen House roof, if you remember the last time we talked, we originally had in the lower roof at town hall. Um, when Steve and I talked about it, um, I had mentioned that we had the possibility of doing that now out of our operating budget. Uh, and we've elected to move forward and do that. Uh, and the one thing uh, he had asked is if we could replace town hall on the plan with the roof of the Hartshorn house. So this would be for a wooden shake roof that is historically accurate uh, for that building. Uh, and so the town hall roof is going to get done. Yes, we're going to, you'll, you'll be seeing the dumpster out here as soon as we know that the weather's going to break. So we'll be doing that, um, you know, within the next couple of weeks. And the Hartstorn House is a Wakefield owned house. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. Near and dear to Joe's heart. <laughs> and we may be able to have some savings in there because one of the estimates they got was about 40. So I think the 50 is, we may be able to have some savings there depending upon the pricing. Yeah. yeah so I have one, I have one for the wooden shapes that's you know, 49,900. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so, they get one maybe lower. So we'll I'll look into it as well. Okay. That'll at least cover the bases there. So uh, yeah. yeah. God forbid the pricing comes in from other vendors worse. Uh, we know we can accomplish for that. We can accomplish it cheaper um, for the same roof in kind. Obviously, we'll, we'll pursue that that yeah. option. Great. Um, still in the plan is the uh, building management system conversion for us uh, for the Dole Bear in the Woodville schools. Um, is, is, sorry, back on the Hartshorn, is there is there a crisis there or is it just time to replace the roof? Uh, it's time and slight crisis. <laughs> okay. Um, so just 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 a thought for the committee since we're 
<clears throat> we're hovering at just a little over um, 2 million, roughly by almost 50,000. 50, um, I think we have a lot of, this would be a tier two, a, a good, I I'd like to, I wanna keep it in this, but if we get pressure to reduce our costs, I would, I would look here as an, as an area to re reduce costs. Yeah, that's good. So uh, one of the other ways uh, that we reduce costs, uh, one of the things that changed since the last time I was in the meeting, refinishing uh, the gym floor at the Woodville. Um, my group is actually going to talk to Bob and see if we can split that between the two parties out of operating. We've done that um, with some other floors in town that needed to be touched up in the schools. Um, so we think that's a that's a good partnership there to get that project done and free up a little bit of space in the capital plan. Um, the HVAC recommissioning, uh, I know even though the schools mentioned that it was a priority one, uh, Phil, I think you were on the meeting, when we were talking about commissioning the public safety building, they're at about a dollar a square foot. I don't think that for $25,000, I don't think that you're going to commission any building in town for that. Um, I know Doug and the schools put together a really good argument. Um, and I think that a larger conversation should happen where we do start doing that through operating. Um, talking to Steve about that, he did not think that, that that number was something that could get us a project anywhere. Um, so it's been you know, deferred unless the committee uh, would like to see that get back in. But um, would, that, would that be a DPW budget item or a school department budget item because it's mechanical maintenance? Um, so I would. You could probably say that the commissioning could be a maintenance, and then if they identify a motor or a belt or a drive or pulley or something like that, you know, my group would get up on the roof and fix it. Um, I don't think either one of us, not knowing what their budget looks like completely, uh, I know my HVAC budget wouldn't support probably being able to commission uh, any of the buildings in town. Um, so we're going to have to come up with, we're going to have to get a better cost understanding of that you know completely and where that yeah, lands yeah. you know per square foot and then maybe put together a multi-year plan to start you know putting these things on a cycle it's exactly um, it joe yeah it, it would be great to get an all-in recommission all the equipment needed and then to develop a phase plan with that number at that point and even then it's still an operating expense but uh at least you guys because because it's right this 25 just doesn't seem realistic especially after hearing that public safety number so uh, when Shane said a dollar a square foot, I just did quick math on so the Galvin's, you know, over a yeah. hundred thousand square feet or you know, give or take. Right. So maybe it'd be a little bit cheaper because you have the infrastructure in place already. Uh, but even at 50 cents a square foot, I mean that's still it still goes way over, you know, what that requested number was. Um, so moving on, uh, the water bubblers uh, are still uh, noted in the plan for 9,000. That was uh, from the schools. Um, both of the requests for the Yule School um, were taken out. Um, so it was I was made aware that the tenants are actually paying uh, as part of the lease agreement for the Yule uh, for the heating there. So not knowing what the long-term plan uh, is for the school, um, it's a situation where it's, it's not broken. Uh, we don't have a definition of what we think we're going to be using that for in the future uh, right now. Um, so it made sense to defer that and put the money towards more pressing needs. The same thing with the abatement. Uh, it would be nice to get, you know, all of the asbestos out of there, but, you know, we removed the worst that that school had. Uh, we currently don't have anything that's friable. Um, so it's another area where it made sense to defer. Uh, if it becomes an issue, my, my group will handle it uh, like we would anyway. Um, you know, but it makes sense, you know, until there's some sort of, of plan for that in the future to, to commit six figures, you know, to a boiler on something we don't know if we're going to remobilize that into another school. Uh, is it going to become office space? Is it going to be something that the town um, ends up getting rid of? Um, un until they, you know, the powers that be kind of figure that out, it just makes sense to push. Um, in the roads section, um, we got better price, uh, more competitive price on the paver, lowered that $12,000. So that's final. Um, the ADA transition plan throughout town for all the buildings 
uh, and all of our intersections in town is still in at 150. If we move down into um, Forestry Park Cemetery section, um, the SCAG power leaf blower that Dennis had talked about uh, the first time he was in, uh, still in at 12,000. Uh, Dennis was able to also get a little bit better pricing on the scoreboard that he talked about last time for Walsh Field. And that came in at 13.5. And we have the playground at the Woodville Inn for 140,000. Moving down uh, into the miscellaneous section, um, the scoreboard with the cage uh, and talking with my conversation with Steve, um, he had asked if we could potentially pursue a donation for, you know, get some of the booster clubs and maybe WBA to see if, you know, that was possible to have them fund uh, the school board with a cage inside the field house. If not, knowing that, you know, our electrician at Public Works, you know, can go out and service it intermittently when he has to, uh, and that it would ultimately be, you know, replaced in the five or six years when the new school comes on. Um, we still have in the second half of the portable radios for the fire department. Um, also, the control and dispatch alarm that Captain Hudson talked about. The application development for GIS for my group and the assessors group, which is phase two, uh, still in at 70,000. And the sea containers for the hot street are in 18. Um, while Todd and Jeff were talking uh, in the IT section, I updated that number to their new request, uh, which is the 153, which is included. Um, something that we should probably talk about. So the Nova time and attendance, this is something that we pushed last year. Um, in my conversation with Steve, uh, he asked to not show it for the time being and have a conversation with the committee about it, uh, asking, you know, his, his thought process was, is this, is this an absolute must have or, or is this a nice to have right now? Um, so I don't know if the group wants to stop and debate some of that or, you know, continue on. It was, oh, it, I was just going to. I thought we had more room um, based upon the last meeting, um, which is fine. Uh, I'm just saying that because this was one of the areas I was going to suggest that we invest in. Um, if if they are if they're doing pen and paper time recording and having an administrative assistant of some type do centralized time entry, that is that is a little silly in in today's world um with you know with the ability to do a time entry portal or even you know time time clocks um which i i don't i doubt they'd have at the the school anyway um i think you know there there are probably a bunch of efficiencies that that would that would get the um the school the ability to to you know Re retask someone in the administrative area to things more important than entering time for teachers. I, everything David just say. Plus, we did approve this last year, and the only reason it didn't happen is because it was it made it didn't make the cut when we had to cut our our approvals in half. Oh, the, is that what happened? I was trying to figure out what I'm like. Didn't we already approve that? Yeah, so I, this committee had already approved, but you know, and I understand why we cut it, but to now to not include it after we already approved it, like I, I and but more every reason David just said. Uh, I I support that as well, and if we keep it, I see Joe added it, and it still keeps us under two point one. Um, if we can stay, I, I got like two point one in my head. I know we've been through that the last couple of years. If we can stay under two point one and and go to Steve and you know as long as as FinCom tonight doesn't have an issue right away with it, see what Steve says with you know especially if we're only at two point uh, you know two million eighty two thousand. If we can subliminal Steve, messages, yeah. subliminal. Oh. Messages, <laughs> look at, look at, it's just I don't know where you're getting these numbers. That's a three point five. Hey, I can save you another eighteen thousand. I don't know if you saw the paper this weekend, but there's a real shortage of those sea containers, an extreme yeah. worldwide shortage of them. I saw that. I read that article. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we may not be getting three uh, <laughs> yeah. sea containers. Call Eagle Freight real quick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Frank, just as far as I'm concerned, is with the to be under the two two point one makes a lot of sense considering yeah. uh, last year when you had to cut everything in half. 
Yeah. Seems like an a extremely reasonable request to go a little bit over the two million uh, projected figure. So I'll I'll leave it in there. Um, I think the the group probably. I don't know if you're ready to make a vote tonight. If not, um, I have a meeting with Steve in the morning. I could I could run the two two million plus with him. Um, his poker face has been pretty good with me. And every time I've asked him what what the real number might be or, or what it, what his tolerance is, um, I'm gonna guess though that you know based on everything, I wouldn't see that that that's unreasonable. I have to go back to him too and say this is this is where we landed. And so it's certainly we worth could, having the dialogue. We, we could always, I mean, if we meet on Tuesday just to vote for a final approval, if yep. Steve had a, had an issue, we could obviously we could trim off some some money on Tuesday before we voted. Um, I, that's sort of how I feel. I don't know. I, I I think that wouldn't be a bit as long as everybody's okay with everything Joe just discussed tonight. Um, without having anything removed or added. I mean, I, I would say let's go forward with this, uh, you know, with keeping the Nova time in there and go with the 2 million and 82,000 plus or minus and, uh, and see how Steve reacts to it. Okay. Um, can, you get, can you wear a body cam when you go into that meeting? Can we have like, <laughs> live, can we have like a live Zoom? Um, Maybe body armor. But it's reasonable, you know, looking at past, yeah, looking at past, you know, past years, we've had 2.1, 2.0, 2.1, you know, we're, we're within striking distance of previous years, um, capital, you know, approval. So I, I would hope that this could be supported for the reasons we talked about. I think so. Um, so just, if nobody has any objections, just moving forward. So the spirit uh, just just, just one quick thing. Um, so the the um, the eighty eight projectors at one hundred and fifty three eight is, is in that number. Yes. Yep. Okay. You okay with that, Dan? Uh, you know, I um, <clears throat> I don't think I'd stand in the way of it. You know, it's it sounds like uh, there's some consensus and there's some understanding of the uh, the need for that for that money that you know I kind of I can't argue with. Well, we we we'll just it's not, just it's not, next year disagreement in in the last couple of years. But if we you know if Dan's not the only one, if I mean obviously I I I agree with it. I want to keep it in there. If, any, if there's someone else who wants to knock that number down, please don't uh, don't feel not don't feel not obligated to speak up. That, that's all. I, I just don't want anyone to feel like uh, you know they, they shouldn't be talk, shouldn't be speaking on it. Everyone else feel okay with keeping it? Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so okay, so we heard um, Todd and Jeff. Uh, mentioned it seems like they have a different plan um, for the spare projectors uh, and that they're going to be able to reuse the ones in inventory, the ones from the Galvin. Um, so that's removed. And then when the committee uh, went through uh, and asked to see what the plan looked like with the tier three priorities on the schools removed, uh, those bad readers came out too. Uh, on the sewer end, my group is replacing one eight inch sewer pump. And we have $100,000 in there for system improvements. Uh, the uptick in the sewer uh, improvement money is basically to keep pace with our paving. Um, We're going to be paving a tremendous amount more this year than we normally have been based on the gracious funding that we got last year at town meeting. Uh, every year we have, you know, between four, six dig and fix areas uh, that we need to accomplish when we investigate the sewers before we pave. We're basically doubling our scope of work for paving. So we're doubling you know, what we think we need our funding for to make those improvements before we start to pave. Um, on the water end, we have the system improvements at 50,000. That was the same uh, number as last year. We feel like that's a comfortable number with us. We have some bonding money that came online that's available to us. We'll be taking care of a lot of other different things. Um, so this is basically an emergency fund for gates or hydrants or different things as you know things come up. And then lastly, on the water side, uh, it's $200,000. 
for the installation of a diffused aeration system. So what that is, is in Crystal Lake, what we find is during the hot months when the summer uh, sun is the highest, there's something happening in the lake where the water under, you know, under the surface, it stratifies. And one of the things that happens is uh, it tends to collect heavy iron and manganese, which actually shuts down uh, our treatment plant for a little while because it's so heavy. Uh, and the amount of cost it takes to remove that uh, makes it impractical to run. So for the last probably three to four years, we've lost about six weeks uh, in the middle of peak consumption. What this system would be is a system of pipes which is suspended off the ground. And what it does is it takes air and it constantly blows air bubbles uh, very slowly through the lake uh, to improve the raw water quality. The benefit that we get out of this is it keeps the iron and manganese levels low. Uh, our filter runs will be longer, so it'll be less maintenance. And the raw water quality will be higher, so we're using less money treating the water before we can send it out for consumption. And um, that basically sums up the list. Does anybody want to go anywhere else and talk about, see anything else while we have it up? Dan, I think did, someone had the question last meeting, Joe, why the SOAR and water division is even in these requests. Is yeah. there any, do you know that or? Uh, so I think it's, it's consistency, right? And respect for the process. So everything that's not in water and sewer is paid out of uh, the tax levy, property taxes. Everything in sewer is paid through the sewer rate and everything in water is paid through the water rate. Um, Every other request that we have that's over $5,000, uh, unless it's an absolute emergency and it's a, we need this yesterday type scenario, we bring to the capital planning committee. Um, so this is just something that is always followed in suit and, and we've done it this way. So what this, these appropriations uh, would be funded through uh, retained earnings, which is basically our reserve fund in both the enterprises. W would we ever have an opportunity to challenge one of these and, um, you know, there's no occasion to do it now, but if it ever came up. Uh, you mean like ask to remove it? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. so this is part of our decision as well. Yeah, it's, it wouldn't be okay. any, I wouldn't treat it any different than anything else. If, you know, myself or my group presented something that you thought was just off base or it didn't sit well with you, I would say then um, <laughs> you know, ask the questions and we'll do our yeah. best. Kind of explain our mindset and justify why we think we need to appropriate the funds. Right. Thanks. Okay. Well, thanks. thanks. Do I do I remember hearing at one point that um, that each year the sewer division and the water division have to fully expend whatever surplus they they've accrued? Is that is that true? Is that how they come to these dollar figures or do they just come to the, or do they come to the dollar figures based upon um, the projects they need, and then the, and then any surplus is is in some sort of retained revenue account? That's exactly what would happen. So, um, you know, the the budget is based on what we think we need for the year to sustain our operation, mm -hmm. uh, including you know the assessment that we get from the MWRA. Um, you know. If, for some reason, we had a line item, let's say our emergency line item uh, on the sewer end for pumps. Uh, we have $30,000 budgeted there. If we have a great year and we don't have any emergencies, we don't touch it, um, anything that's unspent would fall back into retained earnings, much like how um, you know the tax levy and free cash work at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. so we try to keep in the retained earnings about 10% of our operating budget, uh, just to make sure that we have enough money in there, God forbid, you know, we ever needed to tap into it to get ourselves out of a jam, at least you know, we can mitigate whatever's going on and get through you know, the challenge ahead and then not have to borrow a bond uh, you know, completely for everything. Yeah, David, uh, uh, historically, we there's always been a uh, surplus that they've tried to retain mm -hmm. due to possible emergencies, et cetera. Sure. That makes sense. I'm, I'm a believer in a rainy day fund. Well, this this is the super rainy day in the sewer. <laughs> I, I, told, I told Frank today, if, if that pump's going to come out and put a put a full week of work in, I'm going to ask him for an application. So, is it, yeah, 
Are, are we not voting on this tonight for some reason, Frank, rather than having to meet again? Or I, 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 Joe, correct me if, if you think something different, but I talked about it with Joe. Just, you know, he's going to meet with Steve tomorrow and let it, let it settle a little bit just to make sure that everything's good. And it should only be a, it should only be a 10 minute meeting on Tuesday. Um, I mean, unless, unless Joe, what, what, what are your thoughts? Uh, so not, not, not to speak. Am I okay to stop sharing this? Does anybody mind? Yeah, it's fine. Good. Um, not, not to speak, you know, for the committee, but I think, you know, as a courtesy, maybe to just show where the committee landed on the number. Yeah. Uh, and then okay. I really don't think that you're going to see much, much opposition to that. I think uh, all the reasoning has been justified. Um, I think there's been a lot of good dialogue and back and forth. And I think that, you know, considering the number could have, you could have easily argued for a considerable amount more based on what happened last year with the half funding that, you know, never became phase two. Uh, I think an extra $82,000 in change shouldn't be an obstacle that, that's so tough that, you know, a $100 million budget can't, can't overcome that. Um, that being said, I would still run it, run it by Steve just as a, you know, just as a courtesy to him. I would, I would hate to vote on it and, and put something in place that, you know, maybe a potential curveball that he might not have expected. Well, I don't think that's the case at all, but. Yeah, and from a FinCom perspective, I don't see any problem or any issue with this at all due to the uh, past year. <clears throat> Unless anyone so, has a problem next, I mean, what, we get scheduled next Tuesday the 16th. I'm good. And again, we can adjust the time. If, if anyone has an issue, it's probably going to be a real, real quick meeting. Just Sounds good. Take it, you know, just Fine. taking the vote and, and being done with it. But I... um. I think usually Steve in the, this is the first year that Steve hasn't been with the meetings. Obviously he hasn't sat in, he hasn't been zoomed in, which is, which is fine. Um, but his input's always, he always throws, he might throw in a curveball at the end. Um, okay. Just want, just to be safe. And if we go another five, what, five days, another five days with this yeah. testing and we know by next Tuesday, it should be fine. So and if FinCom if FinCom has no issues with it, you would be pretty good. Yeah. Do you know, Frank, when you're going to be presenting? To, um, to the, to the, no, I haven't been given those dates yet. No. Okay. <laughs> it's probably uh, when, when's the town meeting? Is it on April? May eighth. May eighth. May eighth. So I, I'm probably a month away from presenting. Yeah. Uh, okay. So Joe, Joe, and Frank, uh, the capital committee, capital planning committee, uh, is scheduled to be at the council on the 22nd and FinCom on the 25th. All right, I'll, I'll write those days down. <laughs> the 25th, of fin, you said 25th of FinCom? Yes. Okay. That's, that's April? No. March. No, March. March? So not, not next week, Frank, the week after. Yeah, yeah, two, yeah, two weeks, yeah. Okay. Um, so what I can do is, uh, based on the conversation, if, if nobody has any objections, I will, provided I don't get any additional feedback, um, I will take this and clean this up and omit anything that we've decided to pass on for the time being. So we're voting on everything that's essentially been approved uh, and get that back out to you probably tomorrow afternoon uh, so we can all take a look at it and you know, digest whatever it is that we might want to consider further. But uh, and Joe, what was just for the um, for the minutes, what was that final 1048, I mean 2048? What was that final number? 1253. So it's 2,082,000. Oh, $325.19. Okay. And then um, on the sewer, on the sewer portion, it's 170,000. 170? Yep. Okay. And then water was 250. 250. Okay. All right, if no one has any objections to that, then we'll, um, we'll all talk next Tuesday.